Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Glad you could make it. Pull up a seat. Let's chat for a while. I hear everybody's was celebrating last night and was waiting on me to go live. I hear everybody is ready to brag about the Los Angeles Lakers. They win one game against the Pelicans. One game. And everyone jumps up and down. And they come with this new narrative. And the narrative is now Le 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 LeBron James has the players that could actually shoot jump shots. Mm. 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 Wow. Unbelievable. And because of this, now they're ready to get to at least the play in. If not, they could go all the way to the sixth seed and avoid the play in. Mm. That's strong. Actually, OKC is ahead of them, and they're closer to the play end than the Lakers. But we'll see how that plays out now. And we'll also get to see the other narratives. Who did not know the Lakers was going to win last night? I knew they were going to win last night. There was no way they was going to let them lose again to the Pelicans. And they still almost found a way to give that game up. The Pelicans played that game like they was ready for the break. That's all. Did the Lakers look better? And this lineup looks better? Yeah. The lineup actually looks a lot better than what they previously had. That's no... No shock and all. Who didn't know the Lakers lineup was bad going into the season? Because they were too small of a team. I'm like, why do they keep filling up the team with guards? All guards. It's just, and it's small guards. We're going small. It's like, okay, then they're going big. <laughs> they have big Athletic bigs, and you got a bunch of smalls. And they do this every year LeBron James plays basketball. This is why I would never play with this man. There's just no consistency. None. My future, you be somewhere playing and like, all right, let's go. You in sunny L.A. Come on, Brian, let's win a chip. All-star break, get heavy, man. I love the way you're playing, boy. Yep. You didn't learn the new handshake with this loser? Yeah, come on. My God. So, you know, you've been traded. What? Where am I going? Minnesota. It's cold. <laughs> You be at the airport. Welcome. 
We almost canceled the flight because of the weather. You just beat it. <laughs> oh, my God. I would not play with that, dude. What is wrong with people? Now, let's get into something else. I feel like this is being neglected. Anthony Davis and LeBron relationship has been jaded. You know, a lot of people on the team wasn't happy With how a lot of things played out with the Los Angeles Lakers. A lot of people. The Los Angeles Lakers, their actual dynamic between LeBron and AD is so bad that nobody is really talking about it. Now, we spoke about this on the Patreon and a lot of people were baffled. Like, why are you so upset when all of this is going down now the way it is? AD was upset because he lied to about him being in trade talk. And he was. And the fact is, if they were interested in putting him in trade talks, then they're not really interested in him being there long term. And he saw how shifty LeBron is for the first time. Somebody he thought was his brother who had his back through thick and thin and all of this. And... Now it's like, you told me to come here for my legacy. And now I'm the laughing stock of the NBA or this team. I've, I've lost stature. They used to rank me over Giannis. Now they don't. I'm looked at as a joke. I'm in memes. Mr. Glass. I don't feel like my legacy is going anywhere with LeBron on the court. It's just more scrutiny. Now, can winning help this? Yeah. Do I see the Lakers going on a run that's presidented, like unprecedented run? Um, they're going to win some games. They're going to have to win like six, seven in a row to really be in the mix. But the Lakers will get in the plan. And I think they'll be playing against Golden State once again in the plan. Um, this plan and design by the NBA is to boost the play-in, people watching the play-in, so... If LeBron is going up against Steph, who will win? One team can advance. One team will lose. You know, it's just the way I see it. You know, I want them out the playoffs. I don't want them to know we're near it. I want them to miss the plan. I want them to fall completely flat on their face. And I'm sorry for Darvin Ham. Because we love Darvin Ham. But... We don't like this BS that's transpiring.
because everybody, when they lose, it's Darvin Ham's fault. He doesn't know how to rotate his lineups. Really? That's why they lost? Because Darvin Ham just don't know how to, to put in players? He didn't have the personnel to put in. Period. And it was like, Russell Westbrook, he's going to... He's going to go to the Bulls because the Bulls are spiraling. The Bulls are what they always been. Is they did, their, their problem was internal. They decided we good as is. Then I tell you, that's what they are. If you're good as is and you're paying hundreds of millions of dollars and you're not making the playoffs, how is that good for you? As a team, I would be perplexed to say that I'm rooting for this team with no cohesiveness whatsoever. Nothing gels. Everything seems forced. Everything seems like against the grain. Everything seems just god-awful. They're, just, they're walking disaster. But we'll get to them later. Um, no. When you move and, and think different and feel different, then you'll understand. Um. What's his name? Robert S. Squire. Robert Esquire, I believe. That's who he was. He was an entirely different human being. Robert Esquire. <laughs> he used to always believe the Los Angeles Lakers was destined to win about 25 NBA championships. Hell, there's an alert from them bums. Let's see what these ESPN bums want. Are they going to tell me about uh, some former child actor passed away from ODN? In California. Well, that's what happens. Fentanyl. Oh, man. When will they learn? Now. What the Lakers did, good. D-Russ, D-Lo. You got rid of Russ for another Russ. How long before they blamed D-Russ for taking wild shots? Yeah, he looked good. D-Russ has never had a problem with shooting the basketball. His problem is inconsistency. One night, they're going in. The next night, he's shooting too many shots. Bron's not getting up enough shots. Now, LeBron was basically yesterday just a tourist on the court. He was a tourist. He sat there on the court and just stood around while everybody else was working. He didn't have to do a damn thing last night. <laughs> everybody else is playing and he's sitting there just sucking it up. And everybody know what the problem is on the team, but can nobody come out and say it's LeBron? That's sad. That would be in my first press conference. It would be my last, but it would be the first. I'd be like, well, all of us got to play defense. 
And if you look at the tape, you'll see that, you know, some of us just don't have that energy to compete on the defensive end. And they kind of stand around. And that kind of throws us off our game a little bit. So when you got to cover for another individual and you can't trust that individual is going to cover for you, kind of leaves you on the island. So it puts us at a disadvantage, and now we're playing on our heels. Because defensively, we got to get out of position to help this buck. But, um, yeah, go watch the tape, and you'll see who it is. <laughs> And see, you know, somebody to write. Is he talking about LeBron? Because he seems like LeBron was standing around all night. And I'd be, who else you think we talk about? Oh, who, oh, who could it be? Nothing but that ball. Now we get back to the other matter at hand. Oh, let's talk about the new destiny and the new area that they got for everyone else involved. Beasley. Oh, Beasley fits us great. Yeah, he does. He's never, Beasley's always a good role player. He's not a star player, but he's a good role player. He'll hit a corner three. He's athletic. But hit a lot of open shots. A lot of stuff in transition. What happens when you play a team It's not going to allow that? When you play on a team that don't allow you to play that style of game. D. Russ can score 50. We know that. Everybody like, yeah, we got D-Lo back. And it was like, he'll snitch. <laughs> he'll be a snitch again as soon as things start to go left. Watch what I tell you. It's only a matter of time. Just wait for it. Now back to AD. AD and LeBron haven't really spoke for about a couple of weeks. Like, once he came back and started playing again, trying to get in his groove, LeBron was in his I got to get the record mode. So when he got there, he was stuck in I got to get the record mode, and they're losing games. And AD's like, man, damn, dude. Like, I got to get back in rhythm, and I can't get in a rhythm, and I can't get my flow going. I've been injured all this time, but I can't get in a rhythm if you're going to take all these damn shots. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, what are we doing here? I'm trying to play myself back in shape, and I guess he's learning that LeBron James controls the media. And learning who's really from clutch and who's really not. And all these people that's signed to Rich Paul, his agency, sportscasters, are on TV dogging him every night. And he's like, why are some of the people who sign with us, our clients, our brothers, right? We all clutch. Why is Clutch is the one running my name through the ground? Why is Clutch? Everybody who seemed to be signed or aligned with Clutch got something to say negatively about me all the time on the on the radio, on the news, on the sports shows. And he's like, I don't normally even watch these shows. But I was very interested to see who was working like with our agency. So he's, he's going to talk to Rich Paul about it. Like Rich, why are they bashing me and they supposed to work with us? Why are they running my name through the ground every day? 
and they're signed with us. They they don't ever talk about Braun like that. Oh man, man, that's their job, man. You know, we just we let them do their job. We do our job on the court. That's what we do, man. We don't we don't control what they do. You know, we just sign them and get them opportunity. Like, why are we giving people opportunities? Isn't that working against you? If I'm your client, that actually works against you. So from that point on, he feel like I can't trust this LeBron guy. And not to mention, Russ is his dude. You see, this is what people don't understand. Russell Westbrook is beloved by players there because he was real. And they were like, man, I heard all this bad stuff about dude. And dude is not what they say he is. And now all of that is a whole new ball game, buddy. Whole new ball game. Well, we got to move forward and see what we can come up with. But the Lakers winning 25 NBA championships, they'll get there. <laughs> We're going to have to get Silver Slip out the way, but the Lakers will get there. They'll find a way to, to shoehorn them into an NBA championship. And they would have been giving them championships if Golden State didn't emerge. You see, Golden State was never planned. They didn't put that together. That was drafted. And they just started lighting stuff up. <laughs> so, once they started that, Now you see where everybody is. I could care less about that. You know what I care about? Winning. Winning is what we care about. And you can't win when everybody's fighting against each other and hate each other. Eventually, it's going to tear your team apart. And AD and LeBron, as long as they're winning, everything will be okay. The moment they ain't winning no more and they, they continue to lose, I guarantee you, AD will demand a trade if they don't go to the playoffs. AD, AD ain't going to want to be there. He gonna want out. I'm already calling that. He gonna want out. And he probably want away from clutch sports. That was a bad move from the jump. And AD is the one that's being blamed for getting injured. So... I mean, he's had a lot of fluke injuries, and he's tried to play through them because he know the media is going to tear him down, and he's not that psychologically strong or physically strong. And I am swear to that he is the probably the least physical big man I probably have seen in basketball since Aldridge. And it's just like, dude, you're like 6'11", almost 7 feet tall. You get in there. <laughs> I mean, you could put a six, seven guy on him and D him up. And that's what's happening out here. So it's just really weird when you see that transpire. So anyhow, I'm going to get out of here.
I want to thank everybody for coming in, chilling with your boy, keeping it real. And don't forget, follow Kwame Brown Bus Life. Kwame Brown Bus Life 2.0. Ticket TV. Welcome to HD TV. Seahawks Jose Rodriguez show. And I'm out.